Hey everyone, welcome to Heroes Workshop. My name is Stefano, aka Stealth. A lot of the cosplay projects you see me build on this channel, I've been using the Peppacura Designer software. With that software, I create foam templates that I print off and transfer to EVA foam to build cosplay helmets, armor, and props. I created the first Peppacura to foam tutorials in early 2010, and I shared them with the cosplay community and it has helped many people into this awesome hobby. So I thought it was important to explain those methods a bit more and update those original tutorials. In this specific video, I take you along with me as I build an armored hero helmet. I'll explain the basic steps on how to use Peppercore Designer software, how to scale your Peppercore file to your head size, prepare the printed templates, transfer the templates onto the foam, when and how to cut bevels, when and how to heat shape, assembling the foam helmet, detailing, sanding, filling seams, sealing and painting. I'll even include some basic tips on battle damage and weathering. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to build this helmet yourself, and later you can apply all these techniques you've learned to any foam peppercore file templates you come across to finally build the cosplay helmets and armor you've always wanted. Heroesworkshop.com has many foam peppercore file templates for you to choose from. I've also created a supply list for all your foam cosplay building needs. I'll post everything I use in this tutorial on my website. So sit tight, follow along closely, and let's get started. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to use the Peppercore Designer software. This is the program that we're going to import all the Peppercore files into. Please remember this program is only able to run on a PC. It does not work for Mac, so please keep that in mind. So I'm going to leave a link in the description to where you can get the program. And then once you follow the link, you'll come to this page. It's the Tamasoft page. And then you go to this link here. It'll download the Peppercore Designer software installer, install the program on your computer, open it up, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so once you open the Peppercore Designer software, it should look like this because no file has been loaded. Uh, please remember that Peppercore files are in .pdo format. Okay, one thing about Peppercore Designer software, it is not a free program. You do have to pay for it on the website that you get it from. I've been using it for 10 years. I paid for the software and I've been using it ever since. So I got my money's worth a long time ago. The thing is, it, you can use it for free. You can import files, use every single feature that the program has. The one thing you can't do is save your settings. So if you scale a file up or down, uh, you cannot save that setting. So you would have to keep the software open the entire time you're building the helmet or armor part, which is not really too much of a big deal. That's what I did when I was younger before I actually bought the software. But then that got kind of annoying. So I ended up purchasing the software myself. That way I could save my edits and I won't have to worry about always rescaling every time I open the file. So just to reiterate, it's not a free program. It's free to use. You can use all the features, but you do have to pay for that one save feature to save your settings. So first and foremost, we're just gonna import the file that we will be building. So just go to File, Open, and we're gonna use the new tutorial Hero Helmet. I'm including this file for free. The link will be in the description for you all to build. So click on that. Okay, so it's loaded the file. You can see this is the helmet that I'll be building for the tutorial. You may have seen it in the preview. And here you see, this is the 3D area here where your 3D model will be able to uh, be spun around and zoomed in. So you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. You can use the right mouse button to click and drag the model around anywhere you want. And you just use the mouse wheel to zoom in specific areas. Okay, this is the 2D area on this side, on the right side. This is where you'll be looking at the unfolded parts. And you can see here, we have the parts already ready. Whenever you open a file, make sure the flaps are off. If you're building with foam, uh, go to 2D menu and go to show flaps. Make sure this area is unchecked because if you check it, you'll see the flaps. You don't need these. This is for building in papercraft, which what the program was mainly used for. Another thing you're gonna notice when you open a peppercore file that's modified for foam, is if you zoom out, you can use the mouse wheel also on this side, that there'll be a bunch of parts here. You can uh, use the mouse button, uh, the left mouse button to click and drag a bunch of parts at once. You'll notice uh, a lot of these parts are, let's say on the other side, and some of them are just little bits and stuff, which you do not need for foam. I'll explain that in a second. When you build with foam specifically, you only need one side of the helmet. See here, it only selected this side because what you're gonna do is, once you trace these templates onto the foam, you will just flip this template and you'll get the other side. You'll understand how this works when we actually get to the building stage, but I just wanted to give you a heads up because you will see this and you'll be like freaked out. Like, why are these pieces here? Because trust me, I've gotten those messages in the past and it's just people haven't watched uh, the tutorials and then they won't know why a lot of the parts are missing. You'll notice little bits also missing like these little pieces at times. Uh, you can click on the model with the left mouse button. You can click any piece and it'll show you where it is. You can see, click that for this piece, click that. So that's another uh, 
feature that you can do. As I was saying, these little pieces here, some of them will be on the model, some of them won't be. It's all up to you, but mostly if you're using foam, foam has a thickness, so you can exploit that thickness with certain areas like this. So you don't really need these pieces because the foam might actually be that thick. So there's no point to actually trace that template and, and apply it to foam and then doing all these cuts and seams. So if you were to take this piece here and trace it onto foam, it would already be that thick. So I hope you guys know what I'm saying. Like I said, it will make more sense when we actually go to the foam building stage. First thing you want to do uh, before you print your template is you want to remove the texture. This texture is just to make it look nice, if anything, just for aesthetic. So go to this button here. This will remove the texture off, and that way you print it and you can save ink. As you can zoom in here, you'll notice there's numbers on the edges. So having a numbers uh, doesn't really help too much. It does help when you're building in paper craft, but since we're building in foam, it's more about clicking on a piece and seeing where it is on your actual build and seeing what it connects to. If you want to turn the numbers on if they are off, go to 2D menu and go to Show Edge ID, and that should turn them on and off. I keep them on so that when I print, I know that this is the proper side that you're building on because if there's no numbers and it's just blank, you won't know if that's the left or right or the right orientation. So keep that in mind. Okay, so some features in the 2D menu, you can right click and it'll bring down a menu. There's select and move. You just go on the piece here with left click and you can move it around. Rotate, click on a piece and you can just spin it around. This is more for organizing your pieces because if you scale up or down, the pieces may uh, come off the page a little bit. So you can easily just move them and rearrange them and uh, just sort them nicely before you print. Join and disjoin, I use this a lot. Uh, this is good for merging uh, template pieces together. Like you can take this section here and then just kind of reorganize it like this. See? This is great for making larger uh, template pieces by fusing two other pieces together. That way there's less seams. Sometimes they might not work because there's an overlap at times, so I recommend not doing this uh, in this stage, but when you actually print these out and cut them out, you can tape them together and it does work uh, when you actually transfer it on the foam. So join and disjoin is a great feature. I use it a lot for even making uh, templates a bit smaller because sometimes they won't fit the page and they will overlap. So let's say, for example, I was doing this. Let's say you had a scenario like this. Let's join this join these sections here. So you can see it's bigger than the page. And I'm, I'm not the type to kind of print this and then kind of fit it together. I like to sort it out before I print it. So what I would do is I would just right click, join this join face, and then I would just disjoin this section here. And then I would use selected move and then rotate and then kind of put them back like so. Okay, so aside from those features that I've already shown you, the only other kind of useful one for foam building is uh, measure distance between two points. This is very useful for measuring armor. I'll show you guys when I show you scaling with Peppercore files. So you measure this uh, the distance. So let's say you need to know the opening of something. You just kind of click on the edge here. You go to the other side. It gives you like a rough idea what the distance would be. So this would be 6.87 inches. So if this is a little bit bigger than your head width, after you measure it, you know that the helmet will fit over your head so you can actually wear it. The other things you can use it for for measuring like chest width and stuff. Uh, it makes more sense when I show you guys the scaling but for now just uh, keep that in mind that it will be useful for later. And now I'm gonna print but make sure your printer settings are all sorted out. So you're gonna go to file print and paper settings. I use letter paper in North America so if your country uses these kind of paper here you're gonna have to select it I've only seen really letter and A4. So if you switch to A4, it's going to switch the dimensions of the paper. So watch. So it made the sheet a little bit bigger. So if you have A4, you're going to have to move the pieces over before you print. It shouldn't take too long. But since I use uh, letter, so all the files on heroesworkshop.com are in letter format. So you're going to have to switch to A4 before you print and then move the pieces around. Let's go back to print and paper settings. So you can match my settings here if you want. I usually keep everything to zero. Uh, you may want to keep a little bit of a border on the top and bottom and side margins. So let's do 0.2, because sometimes you'll get an error if there's no border at all. So make sure you keep everything within that border. So 0.2 is fine. Let's go to back to print and paper settings. So line weight, you can keep it seven. Print line smoothly, bitmap print and transparency, put zero. 
and everything else should be fine and print page number print alignment marks for multiple pages that's optional but other than that you can leave everything the same if you are printing in letter a4 format uh, it's pretty much the same these settings are important so that way the the lines actually show up because there's problems in the past people haven't seen the lines print out only the numbers so make sure you keep the settings like this then go to ok then once you're done you just go to uh, file and then print and then just press ok and then print your uh, pages out make sure to print on cardstock paper it's very important so that way that when you print and cut out the templates the templates aren't flimsy if you use multi-purpose paper then when you're tracing the paper might uh, crinkle and uh, rip or just move around too much and just compress you don't want to use that cardstock paper is stiff and it's really good for tracing templates onto foam so go to ok and then it should print your uh, templates out so now you've printed out your pepakura file templates for this armored hero helmet we're gonna do a few things before we transfer it onto the foam but once we've done that we're gonna actually start building the helmet All right, so now we're gonna measure our head width and then we're gonna input that uh, measurement into the Peppercore Designer software. But first, you gotta get two boxes or two books. Either is fine. And then you literally just put your head in between and you close the gap. Okay, so then you remove your head from the two boxes or books and you just measure the gap from here to here on the inside. Put your ruler and I got 6.5 inch so I'm going to take that measurement and input it into the Peppercore software I should have the correct scale for the helmet that will fit my head okay so since my head I think it's uh, six and a half inches wide I'm gonna just set the scale to 7.5 I guess yeah it should be good enough so it's an inch bigger than my actual head width okay so I set it to 7.5 so this should fit my head Okay, so that's how you scale a fitted helmet. I've used that technique a lot. It's worked pretty well so far using uh, my head width and just adding an inch or so on the width parameter. But if I was to use that scale here, so let's see, chain scale, set scale. So let's put 7.5 here, exact same measurement that I did for the armored hero helmet that we're building. So you think, okay, that should work, right? Adding an inch. But the way this Peppercore Designer measures, it measures the widest point that you see on the item. So it could be a helmet, it could be armor, it could be anything. So you use measure distance between two points, then you click on the widest point of the helmet to the other widest point. You can see 7.39. So that's what it's actually measuring. So an inch from your head width is not really going to suffice. It's not going to fit because if you check the opening of the head uh, slot here, you can measure the two points here at the widest point, and you get 5.49. So that's smaller than your head width. So there's no way your head's going to fit through this. And the helmet's definitely going to be way too small for you. So you're going to have to play with the helmet width until that parameter here is a little bit more than your actual head width. Let's go to settings, chain scale, set scale. So 7.5. Let's put 9.3. Make it a bit bigger. So boom. It's a little bit bigger. You can see the pieces have increased in size. Let's check the head opening again. Let's check the point from here to here. Widest point of the opening. 6.72. So that's perfect. You know for sure it's bigger than 6.5. So your head will definitely fit through the opening. And also the fact that this helmet scale has increased to 9.3 inches wide. It should be suitable for your head to get through and also look proportionate to your head size. One thing to keep in mind, once you change the scale of the file, the parts will get bigger or smaller. If they get bigger, they will overlap the edges as you can see here. So make sure you take the pieces and move them within the borders. So that way they don't print improperly and everything's nicely inside the dotted lines. Okay, so another thing I want to talk to you about is how to uh, scale armor in Peppacura. This is uh, a bit tricky as well. It follows the same principles as fitted helmets and wide helmets with details that stick out on the sides. You'll notice that when a lot of uh, fitted armor, like look at this chest plate here. So you can see there's nothing else really sticking out other than the pectoral region. So when you measure armor like this, like chest armor, you have to measure from your chest width. So it's, let's say from armpit to armpit all the way across. So let's go measure the distance between two points. The widest point here, and the widest point here. You get 13 inches wide. So if you measure your chest and let's say your chest width is 14 or 15, you'd want to scale this up. So you go to setting, change scale, set scale, and then probably set that to 15 inches wide. Okay, so that's easy enough. But there's another instance 
where it's similar to the wider helmet. It's in regards to uh, armor, like chest and back armor. That, but yes, you can measure your chest width, but there's armor that sticks out farther than the chest, so you're gonna have to compensate for that. So you can do something similar to what you did with the wide helmets. So I'm gonna load a chest and back armor where you can use a similar method to the wide helmet and make the, the chest and back armor work for your scale. Okay, so now we're gonna measure torso armor, chest and back. You can use a similar trick to how to measure uh, wide helmets by using the measure distance between two points feature. So if you measure your chest width, mine is, I think it's around 14 inch wide. So if you measure the widest point near your chest that's on the armor here. You don't measure this area here. This part will probably tuck into under your armpit. You can see here this part here. So you use that point and then measure across to the other point. I get 13.55. So since my chest width is uh, 14 inches wide, this is too small. You want to get a number that's probably an inch bigger than your overall chest width. So I'm looking for 15. So I'm gonna have to scale the armor up. Another method as well is you can measure your shoulders across because you can see here, this is the widest point on the armor. It's the shoulder width, so see? So you can measure from this end to this end. And that's 17.64. I measured my shoulders, it was 18 inches. So that's another uh, parameter that's too small. So that's another parameter that you want a little bit bigger than your actual uh, shoulder width. So you can use this parameter here so you can use either of those. So I'm just gonna scale the armor up so I can maybe get one of those variables close. Since my shoulder width is 18, 18 obviously is a little bit too small. So let me put uh, let me put 19.5 just to be safe. Let's measure those variables again. Let's go back into the armpit here. So I got 14.61. That's a little bit bigger than my chest width, it's half an inch, over half an inch. Let's try uh, the shoulders. 19.1, so that's over an inch wider than my actual shoulder width. Okay, so this is a good scale to use. This would probably work for your, your size and your chest width and shoulder width. I recommend printing them out and cutting a few pieces and kind of like fitting the paper templates on your body before you actually transfer them to foam. That way you can get a good idea if parts need to be scaled up or down. So that's what I do. Sometimes I'll print out the templates and I'll tape them together with uh, just some painter's tape just so it doesn't kind of stick too much. And I'll fit the parts on myself and I'll see and I'll look in the mirror and I'll kind of judge if they need to be scaled up or down. So if they do need to be scaled up or down, just a tiny bit, what I usually do is I go to setting, change scale, and I'll just scale up maybe 10%, not too much. But just keep that in mind, that's a great trick you can do for assessing if the scale is gonna work for you when the templates are still in its paper form. So yes, please try that out before you actually transfer those parts to foam. Okay, I just wanna say one last thing on scaling. Scaling with Peppercore files for building armor is always trial and error. The one misconception is people think you can scale an entire set of armor based on a height. So I get a lot of questions over the years and people always ask me, hey, how do I scale the armor? I'm six feet tall. See, there's a flaw in that questioning because you can have two people that are six feet tall and they'll have a different head size, different chest width, different forearm length, different thigh length, different shin height, different foot size. The key to scaling Peppercura properly and making sure your armor is proportionate to your body, it's always measuring your limbs and applying that measurement to the specific file you're working on. So if you measure your chest width, that's your chest width, and that's how you'd scale your chest file. If your forearm is eight inches long from your inner elbow to meet your wrist, that's how you would figure out the scale for the forearm armor. That's the simplest way to explain scaling armor in Peppercura. I've done this for years, and I've always got it pretty close. So if you don't wanna waste foam, print out the templates, tape them together, put them on your body, see if they need a little bit of tweaking, and then you can scale the templates up or down. The armor is for your body type, not someone else's who's the same height as you. So you always have to scale the armor to your own body proportions. So you've printed your, your Peppacura file out. Hopefully you've printed it on cardstock paper. I recommend cardstock paper because it's, uh, it's pretty strong, it's pretty stiff. That way when you put the templates onto the foam, it's not flimsy when you're uh, tracing it with a marker. To cut the templates out, you can simply use scissors. But you can also use a hobby knife and a utility knife. Uh, these are great because you can just change the blades and you can even sharpen them. Then you just take your knife of choice and just simply cut out the templates. Just cut right on the line. So you've cut out your first piece. Remember to cut these out. Sometimes it's not gonna be a complete uh, connection on these points. So it's your job to just kind of uh, assume where the point would be. It's not gonna make too much of a difference because we're gonna tape these seams later. You can see, 
I just kind of cut it and then made my own point. Okay, so all you're gonna do is cut the rest of the pieces out. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you the next step. Okay, so all the templates have been cut out, but uh, you can see on my sheet, that I opted to not cut out these little kind of sliver pieces. The reason I don't is because the foam thickness will allow you to exploit that and you won't never need to really use these. An example would be an area like this. We will be using six millimeter foam. So that should be enough to achieve this thickness so we don't have to use this little piece there. And for this raised area here, we probably would use eight millimeter and I would just cut some bevels to achieve that look. So it's a good way to just have less kind of cuts and seams and everything. Like for example, this faceplate section, I would just bevel cut outward to achieve this uh, angled cut. I'll show you guys when we get to the foam cutting stage. So before we trace the templates onto the foam, I like to uh, tape all these cuts. That way you can reduce seams on your foam. So it's less work to do of uh, filling seams and sanding and everything. So I like to just use uh, regular packing tape and just tape them up, simple as that. And then I'll show you guys how I achieve uh, the look regardless if these seams are still taped up. So a lot of people worry that when you tape them you're not going to get the right shape but you still will because of heat shaping. Heat shaping will stretch the foam a little bit when you uh, curve it onto a let's say a styrofoam ball like this. So you end up getting the shape back but I'll show you guys what I do. It'll make sense once I start assembling the helmet in it because the helmet will look like it should once it's done. So all you do is just I use packing tape so you can just cut it into strips. All you do is just go on one of those cuts, put the tape over Fold it over, make sure it's secure. Your uh, little cut is merged. Okay, so you just tape up all the seams, do that for the rest of the pieces, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so these are all the pieces with the, the cuts all taped up. You can see that the paper is already making the curve because of all the seams joined up. That's what the foam would look like. Uh, you don't have to use this technique. You can trace the template as it is onto the foam and then trace the, the, the cuts and then join those cuts when they're on the foam. So you'll be connecting the cuts and then creating the seams. This is just a technique, to, like I said, to reduce seams. Just a lot quicker and just a lot less work sanding and filling. So there's another technique that I wanna show you before we trace these onto the foam. It's uh, merging the templates to create bigger templates. So it reduces even more seams. I like to use this a lot. So let's refer back to the Peppercore Designer. So let's take two sections that we're gonna merge together. So you have this section here and this section here. It's the face area joining to the dome area. So you can see there's no real angle or anything like that that's going to complicate it. It's pretty straightforward connection right here at this point. Okay, so let's refer back to the templates. So it's these two sections here, and they just simply connect right here. So all you're going to want to do is put some tape right there and then join them together. You don't want to connect this to this because this is a raised area. If you look at the Peppercore Designer once again, you can see right here, this piece is above this section. So always take that into account and remember to review the Peppercore software on what pieces to connect. I'll be showing how to do this section later. Another section you could uh, merge together to create a bigger piece is this section here and this section here. This is optional, you could do an angled cut, but I'm just gonna connect them together to make a simple, uh, larger piece. So it's these two pieces right here, and just join them at the seam, and you should have a larger piece. So here's another merged piece, this is for the chin guard, and another reduced seam. You could even go farther and merge more pieces to make larger templates, for example, these two pieces here, you could attach these two and tape them together, like so, and just have a larger piece when you trace that onto the foam. Let's say like that, for example. Uh, so you refer to the pepper core designer, uh, you can see that this piece connects to here. So it's up to you uh, if you wanna attach them together. It's You really have to look at the project and see how much you wanna do. So just to keep it simple, I'm not gonna attach these. I'm gonna keep these as two separate pieces. So before we start taking the templates and start tracing them onto the foam and all that fun stuff, first you need to think about what kind of foam thickness you're going to use and what kind of foam in general and what foam you have access to. Uh, HeroesWorkshop.com will have links to foam that you can get, uh, so it should help you to find some kind of foam for your project and other things you're going to use in these tutorials for your own projects. Uh, there's a different variety of thicknesses you can get and they work for certain kinds of armor parts. So we'll start from the bottom. You can get these puzzle mats here. They're usually a half inch thick. There's a texture on the back. These are great for probably like torso armor, like a base, and they work pretty great for that. And they're pretty dense, so when you uh, form them, they hold their shape really well, obviously, because they're a lot thicker. Now we're gonna move to eight millimeter. This is another one. This is really great for armor as well. This is a specialty foam for just uh, cosplay use. 
It's smooth on both sides and uh, I like it a lot. It's pretty dense. Next is the same kind of foam. This is a uh, six millimeter. This one here is just a mass produced uh, floor mat. Uh, I used to use this a lot in the past. It's still really good. It's around a quarter inch thick and it usually comes in a like dark charcoal color. And this piece here is probably around three to four millimeters. This is great for adding details on top of your finished armor or helmet or prop, any kind of thing like that. You can have to use this. You can also use uh, uh, craft foam that you can get from art stores as well. What I like about this gray foam, you can just use a Sharpie, tracer templates, and they're easy to see. If you're using these anti-fatigue mats, uh, not to worry. You can use these silver Sharpies, and you just trace your templates, and then it's easier to see. So that's not a problem. When it comes to choosing the thickness that suits best for your helmet, armor, or prop project, a lot of these things will come to you naturally over time. You'll be able to kind of judge for yourself what um, probably thickness suits best for that specific thing you're building. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using a uh, six millimeter, which is around quarter inch thick, just to keep it simple because uh, in the past I've used quarter inch and around six millimeter for an entire project and it's worked out perfectly fine. It's, uh, it takes a lot of the guessing out of it. As you become more experienced, you start to kind of see things different ways. You say, oh, maybe I can use this eight millimeter for my chest and back or my thigh piece. And it just comes naturally. But to be safe, start off with quarter inch and uh, you should be fine. So for this helmet, I'm gonna be using six millimeter. So it's, a, like I said, around quarter inch. And then we're gonna start tracing the templates onto this foam and cutting them out. And then we'll start assembling that helmet and I'll show you guys how. Okay, so now it's time to trace the templates onto the foam. This is a very crucial part of the foam building stage uh, in tandem with the Peppercore Designer. So we're gonna be referencing that a lot. Okay, so when you look at the Peppercore Designer and you see all the pieces and how they fit uh, together on the helmet, you have to pay attention to if parts overlap. For example, this part overlaps this, like I mentioned before. You can see there's a raised area. This part goes behind. This part goes kind of like above. So there's a lot of little tricks you can do to help you out and speed up things. That way you don't have to cut all these little bits like this. You won't need to do this, this piece here. Because it's uh, going to come down to how you uh, cut your foam, uh, your angled cuts. And I'll be showing you also when to cut a bevel, an angle when not to cut an angle. These are things you have to learn for your own builds because it's very crucial for assembling uh, using the Peppercore Designer, otherwise it won't work. It's not too difficult and once the concept clicks in your brain, uh, you'll never lose it and you can apply it to anything you build. Okay, so first off, we're gonna trace the foam. If there's any little instances that you're looking at it, you're like, why is he doing that? I'll explain why, simple as that. Just things to make your life easier when you're gluing this once you cut all the pieces out little tricks here and there that I've uh, created over the years. Okay, so with these foam templates, it's simple. You just take the, the paper template and put it on the foam. It's gonna get it in a position where I'm not wasting foam. Okay, so you can see this is the template that has been taped. So you think, oh, how are you gonna get that you know, to go on there? So all you do is just squish it down, make sure that the seams don't come apart. Tape the seams very well on these kind of pieces. And don't worry. You think, oh, it's not gonna work because you've taped all the seams. Don't worry, trust me, this works. I've done it a million times on a lot of projects and it should be fine for your project. Like I said, remember, you don't have to do this. You don't have to tape the seams. You can, you're fine just leaving the seams untaped and you would just trace the seams as normal, cut the seams out after and then glue the seams together. It's the same process. I just do this as a shortcut. And start tracing it with the Sharpie. Just remember to keep it down, hold it down. It's just a simple process, trace it. If some seams come apart, don't worry, as long as not every single seam. It's very negligible. The whole point is to get the shape after when you uh, heat shape it. Okay, so that's your first piece traced. Most people, when they first start and they're uh, not really sure how foam building works, they'll look at the Peppercore designer and they'll be like, hey, how come there's only this side? And then they'll be like, how come all these pieces are here? What the heck? So the reason is because uh, you only need one side unless uh, it's for a specific reason that you have both sides. But all you do is you take this template, it's simple. You just tra you just flip it and then you just trace the other side. So now this is the right side of the helmet. Pretty easy, eh? And squish down the template. That's if you have taped the seams. There, you have your first two pieces. 
simply just tracing and then flipping the template to get the other side. I'm not going to just zip through this. I'm going to show you every piece and I'm going to explain why and if I add anything to that, that uh, tracing and I'll explain why I do that. Also a quick tip, remember to mark uh, what piece is what. So I mark just an L. You only need to mark on one because obviously the other piece would be right. So just mark L or R on one of them. It's up to you. But I just mark on the one side. Okay, so uh, this is a good example of something unique that we'll, you'll come across. So this section here, you can see it's just like a raised detail piece. And it has these uh, edges here. You can trace these templates out and trace them onto the foam. Cut them out and join them to this piece to create this block, this raised block section. You can see it's a little bit thick. Let's say this is the piece that corresponds to that section. To get that raised piece without having to glue all those little bits, it comes down to uh, beveling. Like, it's up to you if you want to do the bevel. Uh, like I said, you could still connect those little peppercore bits. Sometimes it doesn't work because it's just a small piece and then the angles are going to bunch up and it, it, sometimes it just makes it difficult. This makes it much easier. So what I do is I just trace the piece Okay, that's going to be this piece and to get that look, I'm going to give it a little bit of a bevel. What you want to do is you want to create a border, but when you cut the piece out, it's a guide for how the bevel will be. Just to remind you basically, so because if you don't do this, you might forget and just cut the piece out and you'll be like, oh, oh no. When I get to cutting that piece, you'll see why it works. Now we're going to come to this piece here. It's like a piece on the side. So you can see it, it uh, it's going to connect to that piece that I just traced. Okay, easy enough, right? But there's something unique that you have to do with this. So because this piece connects here, once it's in, uh, you know, once you're assembling it in foam, this will sit next to it. But a good way to have it secure is to create a lip. So I take this piece, and I just kind of use this as a guide to how far. So I just give it a tiny bit of a lip. And I just trace, I just use the piece, doesn't matter. To be honest, I just do this freehand, but I'll just do it for the sake of the tutorial. Then you have a lip. So when this is cut out and beveled, this will glue on top of this, and it should give you that raised look, like so. And don't worry about this area here, these two pieces. These pieces will glue together flush, but you can see there's no raised area here. It all works once uh, you have it all cut out. And you can see here, you can probably guess what happens to this piece when you trace it. I'll do it next just to show you guys. I can't forget, I gotta trace the other side of this. But I'm gonna put an L, just so I don't forget. This is the left side. Then trace this. So then the other side also will sit on top as a raised piece. You can probably guess another piece that will have a little lip or seat for this uh, raised kind of section with bevels is this section here. You pretty much do the exact same thing. So now we're going to take this piece here. And there's a couple of unique things that we're going to do with it. This is this section here. And there's also a little diamond detail inside. So I'm going to show you what to do with that. Anytime you can merge pieces together to create a larger piece when tracing these templates on the foam, do it. You just have to look at this piece here. If it's possible to uh, have them together without ruining the shape, you can do it up to here, but you can't do it here because it kind of goes off to the left. But this part seems to be straight enough to where you can flip it and just line it up to create a larger section. So that's what we're going to do with this. So I'm going to first, to save foam, I'm going to do the right side first so I can see where I'm going. Okay, so you can see that right there. And then I'm going to flip it. I'm going to trace right on that line right there. You can see this part here, it does not connect. You can just simply glue that once it's cut out. So going back to the Peppercore Designer, you can see this is the part I was talking about. This sits on top of that, in a sense, virtually. So all you would need to do is create a lip on this piece here for this piece to sit on after and do it on both sides because there's two pieces. It all makes sense when you assemble it. Okay, so I'm going to trace another piece that these two uh, raised areas are going to sit on top. So this is part of the chin guard. You can see here, this section right here that was merged together to reduce this long seam. Okay, so you just trace it like everything else. 
I'll leave some space because we're going to put a lip again. I'll, put a, I'll leave some space on the uh, end here. I'll show you guys what I mean. Okay, so that's the left side. So you can see the pepper core designer. This piece sits on top of this. So all you need to do is make a lip on, on top of there. On the end here. Okay, and then we're going to do the lip again. And that's the right side. Okay, so now we have this piece here. It's part of the dome section that connects to this part and also connects to this part. So this is not going to have anything special. So I'll just do this side first. Squish the template because the seams have been taped up. Like I said, you don't have to do this seam taping business if you don't want to. Okay. Okay, so next is this section here. It's part of the chin guard. It's like an inner guard and it sits lower than the front face plate and the chin guard. So that's pretty simple. Using the logic that we've had for this piece here, we just do it in reverse. Okay, so you gotta remember, this piece here, this raised piece will sit on top of this, and then it will sit underneath also these here. So all these pieces here will sit above this. Okay, so let's do an example here. So I'm gonna trace it. Trace it normally. Don't worry about the other details later. Okay, so this is the left side that I showed you. Okay, so because it's gonna sit below the face plate and the chin guard and that beat raised detail layer, all you need to do is create a lip here, create a lip above, and create a lip below. Okay? And then when we're gluing it, you'll see why. Okay, so next piece is this piece. It corresponds to the front chin section. This piece looks like it has a piece that connects to it like this. And you can see here, it's this piece here. And also another piece on the bottom. You may want to actually do this because it seems like it's pretty thick. Or you don't have to, like I said. But I'll just do it to show you how it looks when you uh, trace and, and uh, cut out a smaller piece and assemble it together with another section. Okay, so I'm going to take these and just trace them like so. These need to be traced on their own. They can't be merged because they're on an angle. You can see here. You can see this piece will be an angled cut here. And as this one will connect directly to that one. So we might be able to trace two for this section, but we won't have we won't be able to for this piece here. But we will be able to flip this one here and connect it as it's flat. You'll see why when I'm assembling. As I was saying, this piece here, this can be flipped. Okay, so it's the left side. Okay, I was close. Just be careful you don't go too close to other pieces. I have enough room to cut, but keep that in mind. Don't get too close. Okay, so now this one. Okay, left side, mark it with an L. Right side. And then this bottom piece here, it's the bottom of the chin guard. Since it seems like it's somewhat flat, we'll just uh, flip it to keep things easy, simple. Okay, so that's going to be the bottom of the chin guard. I think this is the last piece. Okay, so this little tiny piece is just another section that connects to this uh, chin guard area. I could have taped it. But it has quite the curve, kind of, you can see. So I don't want to take my chances. Uh, you can also use the thickness of the foam and not even do this if you want. But I'm going to do it just for the sake of the tutorial, just to teach you more uh, angled cuts and such. So I'm going to trace it.
Okay, so the entire helmet has been traced onto the foam using the Peppercore templates. I've shown you how to reduce seams. I've so showed you how to merge the paper templates to create bigger pieces. I've also shown you how to create bigger foam pieces by flipping the part. I've shown you how to trace templates so that they have raised areas according to the Peppercore designer. Uh, you're going to see how that works later. Yeah, so next step is to cut out the templates. I'm going to show you how I cut out the templates with certain angled cuts, why I do those angled cuts, and I'm going to show you different types of angled or beveled, uh, whatever wording you like to use, uh, when to do a certain degree. So I'm going to show you some examples of bevel cuts first before I actually cut them out on the foam so you can understand when to do it and when not to do it at all. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys some examples of angled cuts or beveled cuts, if you will. It's really simple, and even though I'm showing you now, I will still show you when we're actually assembling the helmet what I'm, what kind of angle cut I'm doing, and I'll show you on the Peppercore Designer uh, what that angle will look like. Also, when you're, you're dealing with curves, what kind of cut to do. So let's get started. So first off, let's get to, uh, let's say, a sharp angle, let's say 90 degree angle. So what I would do is, I would cut both pieces that are going to connect on an angle like this. So you can see here when they join, I already have it glued, but I will show you this again when we actually assemble the helmet. So when you glue it together, you'll have a nice 90 degree uh, angle. Next is a slight angle. That's where you just angle cut one side, and then the other side you just leave it a straight cut. There's an angle, but not as sharp of an angle as the first piece. Sometimes you run into what I call an inverted bevel that's when there's a piece and then another piece sticking out on an angle so you the same thing you cut one straight one on an angle and it just kind of like offsets like that and then a simple straight uh, cut and connecting two areas that have no angle or anything it's very simple and straightforward now finally when there's a curve like the top of a dome of a helmet or any other areas on armor. Uh, a lot of people think sometimes you would need an angle cut or something like that, but you don't. Once you cut the pieces out, it's just a straight cut, and then you heat shape them, and then once you glue it together, you'll still get your dome. Even with the straight cut, the pieces were already designed to be curved, so you don't need anything fancy. And it glues together, and you still have your curved shape. Those are just some examples of angled cuts and straight cuts. Like I said, I'm gonna reiterate once we're assembling the helmet, I'm gonna show you what cut I'm doing and why. I'm gonna show you how I glue it, and uh, then I'll start assembling the helmet. Okay, so now it's finally time to cut out the pieces from the foam. And it's very crucial time, because you have to assess what cuts are going to be angled cuts and what cuts are going to be straight cuts? Is it an inward cut, like an inward bevel or an outward bevel? So we see here you have to refer to the Peppercore Designer and that will tell you what kind of cut to do. Because some cuts, like I showed you earlier, will be slight angles, some will be 90 degree sharp angles, and some won't have an angle at all. So this is the perfect time to look at the Peppercore model and see what kind of cuts you'll be doing. This is where you need to learn this so you can apply this to any other project you're doing and any other Peppercore file that you're uh, using for foam. You have to look at the model and you have to see the angles and then you decide what you're going to cut. Well, let's start with this piece here. So this is the faceplate and part of the dome. Because we merged the template, part of the dome here has no angle. It's just flat connection, like a straight cut right here. All the way to the end. But there's a little bit of a bevel here for the nose. So it stops here where we taped the two pieces together, if that makes sense. So you can see right here. You don't have to do this. Like I said, you don't have to tape these two pieces together. I did. If, uh, if you didn't do this, all you would just do is these two pieces would be separate. You would bevel this, obviously. And that's it. You wouldn't have any problems. And then once you glue it, you just glue this to this. That's it. But for me, I'm experienced, so what I'll do is I will cut a straight cut. And then when I get to this, I'll turn the blade. And then I'll start to do an angled cut inward. 
and I'll do that on both sides. So I'm just using the template to trace uh, that marking so I know when to turn the blade quickly. Okay, first off, you can use knives to cut the foam. Um, you can use a utility knife. You can uh, break off the blades and get a fresh blade. You can also sharpen this too, or you can use a hobby knife. You can change the blades and you can sharpen this as well. I use this uh, kitchen sharpener. There's other things you can use. There's another version of that. It's a pocket one. You have a lot of options, but just remember, keep the blade sharp when you're doing these uh, cuts. So that way you have very clean seams. So I'm just gonna use the hobby knife. I think if I was doing thicker foam, I'd probably switch to the utility knife because the blade, you can extend it a bit longer. I've done a lot of cool cuts uh, when I'm using this kind of knife on thicker foam. Since we're not using this little piece, which is here, we're gonna exploit the thickness of the foam and we're gonna cut an outward bevel in that area to get this nice flare look. So that way it's not so dull. It's just like a straight cut. Let's get this nice little angle going. You can see here, that's the, that's the area where that flare is gonna be. So I'm just gonna take the knife and turn the blade and then cut it on an angle. Like so. And you can see, just a quick preview. See that's that bevel right there, the outward kind of angle. We're gonna cut a straight line here for the dome and then we're gonna turn the blade because this nose is gonna be angled. Just take your time. You can practice on scrap foam before you do these. I'm just taking my time to show you guys. So right here, you can see I'm at that point and now I'm just gonna turn the knife and just go at an angle. So this area is gonna glue directly to the next area with just a straight cut. And this area here looks like it will glue to this area, possibly with a slight angle. Like I said, this cut here, it's gonna glue directly to the next piece over. So we just cut it straight. And now we're gonna look at this seam here. Looks like it's gonna be a slight angle, I believe. That's where one side will be a straight cut and one side will be an angle cut, like I showed you before. I think we should leave the straight cut here and we'll angle this part here because this raised area here needs to be a straight cut to emphasize the raised eyebrow area. So that keeps it simple. And then this area here will glue directly to this area here. And then this area here will glue directly to this area. So nothing really complicated, we'll just do a bunch of straight cuts. So just cut straight cuts and it should be good to go. Okay, this is something we're gonna do right now. It's uh, pretty intricate. We're gonna have to emphasize this bevel because you don't wanna use this tiny little sliver here to do this. You can, you can exploit the foam thickness and get a nice little flare on the eyebrow. So you want to disconnect this part here. Just cut it loose. And then you want to cut an outward bevel going this way. Depends how much you want. Don't, don't put too much, but put a little bit. And then this one, just cut a straight cut or even a slight angle if you want, uh, inward. So you don't see too much of the lip. Okay, so there's the piece with the straight cut and then it turned into a bevel for the nose, the outward bevel for the flare, and then the outward bevel for the brow flare. And this was a straight cut, straight cut, straight cut, and straight cut. So you're gonna do that exact same thing on the other side and then we'll go on to the next piece. If you're not gonna keep these two connected and merging them, just for the sake of this uh, awkward kind of cut, it's kind of like more of an experience cut. I recommend as a beginner, keep these two separate because when you keep them separate, you can make a lip for this area here. Uh, if you look at the model, it's raised here like I mentioned, so it would be best to trace it. Like I'll show you an example. So like I said, if you don't decide to tape it, because I was just showing you an example of merge pieces. In hindsight, I would have not done it and I would have made just a simple lip like that. And then, there you go, see? So this little lip square piece 
would have been for this, this section to sit on top like that. Say you have somewhere to glue. I could even get like, let's say I trace it and cut it, for example. I can just get a piece of foam and glue that in there, which I will do. And then that way this can just be easily glued on top. It's just a little quick fix if you are merging these. But if you're not, if you're new, and you don't want to do these kind of like double cuts where you have to do two kinds of cuts in one go. Keep these separate. Just be smart. Use common sense. Know your skill level. But I will be using this little square as just kind of like a lip to keep it raised. Okay, so you have your first two pieces cut out. I also went ahead and glued that little bit in there. You can see that that's where it would sit on top when you glue it, and it should be fine. Let's keep going. I'm gonna show you guys all the cuts. Next piece we're gonna do is this piece here. It's kind of like part of the chin guard. It goes underneath this one and this piece here. Okay, so here's the piece. You can see it's marked L. You only have, to, like I said, you only have to do it on one side because the other side is obviously the right side. No fancy cuts here, just straight cuts. Based on looking, there's nothing there other than lips. I'm just using the utility knife for variety. Just cutting it quick. So this is the left side. And you can see on the peppercore designer. So you can see on the peppercore designer, this piece here goes underneath this. And it connects to a few other things, like this piece and then this piece. But for now, we're just going to reference this to show you. So you can see on the left side, it would go right here. We go underneath, see the offset? That's what the lip is for, just for easy gluing. Put that together, you can already see what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna show you guys all the cuts. I'm not gonna leave you guys in the dark. That way you can apply these techniques to any Peppacore file template that uses foam. That way you shouldn't have any problem building anything. Let's go to the next piece we're gonna do. We're gonna do the chin, because it has a lot of angles here. So it's this section here, this section here, and this section here. This section connects to this section with a, with a sharp angle. This section connects to this section with a sharp angle. And you can see there's a point here and there's another sharp angle connecting this section to this section. To reiterate, all it is is just looking at the piece you're working on. You can just see with your eyes if it needs a sharp angle, slight angle, or just a straight cut. Let's go to the foam. So you gotta look what connects to what. It's good to trace, when you trace your pieces, trace them close to what it's gonna connect to. So this is gonna connect to this. These are gonna connect to this. And this I didn't put it there, but this is gonna connect underneath. When you glue it. An angled cut here, an angled cut here, and I think an angled cut on the bottom. So inward bevel, inward bevel, inward bevel basically is what I'm trying to say. And this part here would be an inward bevel, inward bevel. This is the other side, you gotta match it. And then inward bevel, inward bevel. And it will all come together. So let's just cut it. I'll show you guys. So inward, inward bevel, turning the blade. Straight cut, inward bevel, always flip your phone, don't go crazy doing some kind of weird arm thing to try to cut it. So inward bevel, okay so you can see, so inward bevel, straight cut, oh. and inward bevel again. Okay, so now you've cut those pieces out. You can see both have a bevel and that will make a sharp angle. This is gonna be this area here and this area here. There's gonna be a bevel here and a bevel here. I'll refer to the peppercore designer. You can see the sharp angle that connects together all three parts. Two bevels this way and this way, and these are just regular cuts. You can see the bevels there. Okay, so this section here, we're just gonna cut another inward bevel. And these are just straight cuts. Okay, so this is the front of the chin guard, and then because we beveled this edge and this edge here on the front. Okay, so once you glue them all together, you should have a sharp angle 
this will make more sense when we actually glue together, but you get the idea. Taking the same main piece, you can see that the bottom is also beveled from this section, and then we beveled this area here, so that way this can glue to this, and then this can glue to here, and that way you'll have another sharp angle. But I'll take my time and show you guys when I'm gluing this together. Okay, so let's go to this section here. You can see that this, just look up like that, this connects to here, flush, with a straight cut. This connects to here, straight cut, flush. This will glue to here, flush. This will have a lip that we drew later. This, this will have a lip uh, to connect this uh, section here, this raised section underneath. And this edge here is gonna connect to this and this all the way around. So because we did a straight cut here, and this one will be a straight cut when we get there, this is going to be a slight angle, very slight, but we're still going to have to put a angled cut, a bevel, inward bevel on this edge here. That's the only uh, bevel we're going to cut, is an inward bevel. Do a slight bevel, don't do too much, it's just a very slight angle. So you come back to the foam, and this is what I was explaining. So this is the lip that I showed you that this will glue on top. This is a straight cut. Straight cut, straight cut, and this is where you put the inward bevel. Just do a slight angle and you should be fine. So let's cut all the straight cuts first. Easy enough. Okay, so as I said, you're going to do a bevel, slight bevel, and should be good to go. I'm turning the blade on an angle, like I showed you before. Just go right through, like that. Okay, you can see the bevel is made. And do the same thing to the other side. Once these are all heat shaped and everything, this should, this should fit nicely uh, in that area. This is the raised detail area, which you will cut a bevel. So we can see here, I'm gonna use this blade. So just cut on the outside. Just to give you a little more meat, I guess, on this bevel. Okay, so let's cut. So now you want to cut those bevels, extend the blade. So just go and do an outward uh, bevel. Turn the blade. Just to get the idea. There you have the raised detail area with bevels. And all you have to do, turn the blade and do an outward cut. This is the part that will sit on this area here. And you can see it's a raised detail area. There. I have two raised detail areas that are going to go on top of those pieces with uh, bevels cut outward. So next piece is the chin guard here. So these two pieces were merged together with tape. And there's this little bit here, which we will cut an angle for. You can make a little bit of a flare on this edge here. If you don't want it to be so plain. But it's up to you. You can make a straight cut. I'm going to add a little bit of a flare. So I'm going to do a, a tiny bit of an outward bevel. Not too much. I'm just going to turn the blade slightly. And when I get here, I'm just going to turn the knife point. And just keep going. And the rest of it, you just cut it out using straight cuts. This piece is going to connect to here. We left this as a straight cut because this is only going to be a slight angle. So one side, like I said before, has to be a straight cut and one side has to be a bevel. Okay, so we're going to cut an inward bevel on this piece here and the rest we're just going to do straight cuts. I have the piece and this piece will glue like this and then this edge will glue down like that. Okay, the next piece we're going to do this area right here. This area is going to connect to the first uh, piece we cut, the dome, and it's also going to connect to this back area which we will do next. So it's going to glue to this section. We cut a bevel so that way all we need to do for this is cut a straight cut every way around. Easy enough. 
This is the piece here. Just cut it and you should be good to go. Okay, easy enough. Okay, so next piece is the back plate. We merge these two together, except for this area here, but I'll show you guys how to glue that later. Uh, there are no angled cuts. This glues to this, and then this will glue to this with a lip that we created. I'll show you guys in a sec, just to remind you. That's pretty much all there is for that. So coming back here, these are the lips I was telling you about. It's for these uh, beveled sections to kind of glue on later. I'll show you guys how to do that. Just cut it out, straight cuts all around. Uh, sorry, this back area here, if you want, you can add a little bit of a flare like you did to the front of the faceplate. I'm gonna add a little bit just for, give it character. So I'm gonna do an outward bevel as I cut this bottom area out. So I'm gonna use my utility knife just to make sure. Okay, now just cut the rest out, straight cuts. Simple as that. Use my smaller hobby knife to get in this area here, more intricate. So this is the back plate. You can see this piece here is gonna to need to be glued, but we will do that when we assemble. And it looks, should look like that when it's done. It should look correct. This is the triangle. I gave it maybe 25% a bigger edge. You'll see why. So just cut it out. I'll show you guys what the original size was. So the original triangle was about this big. So I increased it, probably gave it 25% bigger size. The reason being is to get that kind of inset detail, let's see this was glued together, you would just take this and then glue it behind and then just basically glue the edge and then just stick it on the back. It'll make more sense once I'm actually assembling. Okay so here are all the pieces that we're going to be using. They've all been cut. All the angled cuts have been done, the bevels, inward, outward. We've made lips for other pieces to sit on. And uh, everything's pretty much ready to go. But there's one thing I want to show you guys before we start to assemble uh, all the pieces together to create the armored hero helmet. I want to show you guys how to do detail lines on your foam. Always do the detail lines before you assemble. It makes it much easier to trace nicely and then etch them out. So I'm going to show you guys that first. I'm going to do just some random little details here. They're not going to really be anything too specific, just random shapes, just to give you the idea how to do detail lines. So we're going to do it on these pieces here. Whenever you're doing like an actual character like Batman or Iron Man or whatever, Halo, you're going to have reference and you're going to see the detail lines and you'll be able to add those yourself on your phone projects. Since it's not a character that actually exists, we're just going to add some random details. My tip is to keep the templates, obviously, don't throw these away yet. I'm gonna do just something random, maybe just an outline or something, I don't know, we'll see. Okay, what you're gonna do is with your knife, just cut it out. Okay, basically you have your stencil. You don't need to use a stencil, you can obviously just Draw right on there and just do the same thing on the other side if you're not too picky. Some people are picky, so it's probably best to make a stencil. And all you have to do is just place the stencil on the foam. You can use a pen or marker, or if you just have a good eye and you don't want to use this, you just trace around a piece here. And I'm going to use the stencil for the other side. Okay, so, and then for this, I'm just gonna do a quick line design here. To get these detail lines to pop, you need to score them. So get your hobby knife, and you're gonna score these detail lines, but obviously don't go through the foam. Just score them lightly with the knife, follow 
the line. Go back the other way, so that way it actually meets. So now we're gonna make these detail lines pop. Best thing to use is a heat gun on high. Remember to just keep the heat gun moving. That way you don't burn the foam. That's one pass with the heat gun. You can see the lines already popping out a lot. Another thing is uh, you just add more detail lines as you go. Say, um, I wanna add some more lines. So I'm just gonna add some vertical uh, lines here. And you would do the same thing. You would just score them and then use a heat gun. And then you just added some more lines. So just add a little bit more details. You don't have to do this. Like I said, you can add any details you want on this project. This project is just for fun and a demonstration. Just be creative and make the helmet your own. Okay, so you have all your parts ready to assemble. All the detail lines done, all your bevel cuts, lip sections and all that cool stuff ready to go. To assemble the helmet, you're gonna need to glue it together. The glue I use is contact cement, and uh, if you can't find contact cement, and this all you have is hot glue, you can use hot glue, but I recommend using a low temperature, so that way it doesn't take forever to cool down. And in some instances, uh, you can also use a gel type super glue, but don't use it for an entire project. Uh, just use it for a little repair or work, maybe some seam you might have missed, getting uh, some contact cement on or hot glue. This uh, works great, works like a charm. But if you can get a lot of this, then you can use it for your, I guess you can assemble the whole thing if you have enough gel super glue. And you're also gonna need a styrofoam ball or something rounded to shape the foam over. And we're gonna need a heat gun to heat up the foam so that way we can shape it onto this styrofoam ball. We're gonna refer to a Peppercore designer. We're gonna do the heat shaping first. We're gonna look at the helmet and see what parts have a curve. And just use your eye, it's common sense, and you can see that this area here has a curve, and this area here has a curve, this one has a slight curve. That's how you assess uh, how things are going to look once they're glued. So you can't get this shape unless you heat shape it. So let's start with the faceplate area. So this side's going to glue to this side, and this is going to glue to this because we've connected these. Obviously, if you didn't connect these and merge them, just connect these two first connect these two and then merge these two sections to these two. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so you're gonna take the first piece and you get your heat gun, put it on high. Remember to keep moving with the heat gun. Don't just leave it at one spot or you will burn the foam. You can do both sides as well. It helps a little bit. So we're gonna heat up the foam and then we're gonna shape it on this styrofoam ball. Okay, so it's nice and warm. Take your, take your piece, put it over the styrofoam ball, and just heat shape this section. You have to use a pepper cool designer to see which areas need heat shaping. Sometimes the whole piece might not need to be heat shaped. Like this section here, only, the only this area here, but the face plate is just going to be rounded like that. So I'm not going to heat shape this. But this area here definitely is the dome, which will sit on your head. Okay, so you can see the piece has a nice curve to it now. And now it matches the original uh, part that I taped together. So you can see what I was talking about. Even if you tape it, you can still achieve the look once you uh, heat shape it. So when you heat shape it, you're kind of stretching it a bit. So you're accounting for the loss of size when you close the seams. Okay, so both sides have been heat shaped in the dome area, you can see. So it's pretty simple. If you're using hot glue, all you need to do is just glue one side of the seam and you would just glue it together, easy enough. Contact cement works way better with foam the trick is to this though, you can't just put it on one side, you have to put it on both sides because the contact cement has to stick to itself in the end. And also the key is to get a thin layer, don't just put a big huge glob because it's never going to cure the way you want and it's going to start uh, coming out of the seams once you squish it together. I just put it in this jar here, you don't need to do this, you can also put it in a ketchup kind of squeeze bottle, I used to do that as well. With the ketchup bottle you can just squeeze it on the seam and you can use a, a scrap piece of foam and just spread it smooth. 
on both sides. I'm just going to use the scrap foam itself. You can also use a cheap brush. That works too. Then you just take the contact cement and just spread it on the seam that you're gluing. Remember what I said, keep the, the layer of contact cement very thin. That way it, it starts to get tacky quicker. It's not going to get fully dry, it's just going to get tacky to the touch. Tacky is just like where it's a little bit sticky, but not kind of gooey. You can also use a small foam brush if you have it. Remember to wear protective gloves so you can get this stuff on your hands. Another thing to remember, always be in a well-ventilated area. I'm in a big open space, the ceiling's super high. This place is like really big. You can also have a little fan blowing this away, that helps too. But remember, always have either a window open or something, just be in a well-ventilated area. Or else it'll definitely make you loopy. Because it's so thin, it's already starting to get tacky here. Remember, if your contact cement starts to get a little too gooey, or you can't spread it, uh, use some thinner, they sell Accompanying thinner that goes for this contact cement. Just add a little bit, mix it up, and then you'll get it back to uh, a workable kind of consistency. If you ever need, get any contact cement on the surface, just use your foam, kind of squeegee it off. You can also sand it off later, or you can rub it off like this before it fully cures. Another thing you can do to speed up uh, the curing time, so to get the contact cement tacky a lot quicker, just use a heat gun, but don't put too much heat on it, or it's going to get all uh, bubbly. Just run it and then just keep moving it. A little bit of heat's not gonna ruin it, don't worry about it. So you can just tap it lightly with your finger. You can see that uh, it's starting to get tacky. You can see before, our angled cut there, and then our straight cut. So we're gonna do the angled cut first, and then continue with the straight cut. So you refer to the peppercorn designer for what piece connects to what, and just glue together. You just slowly line it up, Just squish it together. I'm going to go back and squish the seams together just to make sure they all connect. Here's your first two pieces glued together using contact cement. Looking good so far. So we're going to go and continue on and I'm going to show you what pieces connect to what and I'll show you how they go together. Okay, so let's refer to the peppercorn designer. Next piece we're going to connect are these two pieces here. So this one is going to connect to the opposite one, and then it will glue to this section here. So we have those two pieces right here. We're going to have to heat shape them and then glue them together. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. These two pieces here, heat shaped, glued on both of the sides here. And we just stick them together. Okay, so we have another piece. This part will connect to here. So now that we have this part here and its counterpart on the other side, this part will connect to this area here. You can see how it's struggling to line up in the center. All you can do is just squish the foam and it should uh, get into the spot you need. So don't be afraid to squish the foam when it's required to get things to line up. Like see here, this here is a little bit offset. So I'm going to just squish the P area on the right as I stick it together. You can see the issue is resolved. Okay, so the helmet's uh, taking shape. Okay, so we're going to refer to the peppercorn designer. You can see the raised area there that we prepared on both sides. So you can see the lip right there for the eye area to have that raised section. Same thing on the other side, obviously. So we're going to glue those first and make sure just put a dab somewhere on the bottom. You can see that it's going to connect there. So do the same thing to the other side. Let's go refer back to the peppercorn designer. We have this section here. The section is going to connect to these two pieces that we just glued together. Okay, so don't forget to put contact cement on these areas here because they will connect to this part here and I'll show you where they go after. Okay, so I put it on the edge here. I'm gonna put some contact cement on the lip here because we're gonna need that later because that's for a raised area. Okay, so we're gonna come back to our faceplate area here and we're just gonna connect those areas we glued for the raised detail. Just 
basically glue it within the lines that you see. So now that that section is glued, we're going to have to glue all the areas that it's going to intersect with. So you can see, this is going to glue right here, and that's going to glue to this. So we're going to have to glue this edge, this edge, and then this here. Okay, everything looks tacky. So now we're going to start carefully merging these areas together. Make sure other areas don't stick to each other while you're assembling. I think I'm going to start from here first. From the back. Just for that reason. Because it's a little bit tricky and I don't want those areas gluing together so soon. And remember, if you make a mistake, you can always use uh, contact cement thinner. And just brush on the inside of the seam, and then it should come apart, and you can just re-glue it. Okay, so I got that area right here. Now just to glue the other sections together. Okay, so we got that piece connected to the main dome and face area. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side and I'll be right back. So we have both sides connected to the base dome of the helmet. Now we're going to connect the area that goes to the back here. So for the pepper core designer, it's this piece here. It matches this thing here. So we're going to heat shape it first because it has a little bit of a curve. The back you can see on the pepper core designer has a little bit of a flare. So I'm just going to give it one using my fingers. I don't know if it will hold, but you can see it kind of has that little bit of a kind of a swoop. Okay, so first we're going to glue these sides together. I'm using a brush just to show you some variation. This is just a cheap disposable brush you can get from the dollar store. So now that piece is together, now we're going to get the triangle that I told you guys about earlier. What you want to do is just put glue on the edge, nothing here, and then just put glue on the inner edge, and then just stick it on there like this. It should look like this once it's glued in. Okay, so you just take this with the glued edge of the triangle. Just fit it in there so you don't see any gaps. Let's refer to the pepper core designer. You can see this part will connect to here and also connect to a little bit of this. So this edge will connect to these two. This edge will connect to this. And this edge will connect to this one. Okay, so all we need to do for this piece here is just glue the edge all the way around. And then we're going to have to remember to glue this edge here as well because that's going to help us glue this part here. So don't forget that to glue this part area here. Glue that edge that we needed. So now that that's glued, just put that aside and let it get tacky. And now we're going to have to do the inside of where that piece is going to go. So these are the edges that it's going to connect to. So we're going to glue these as well. Okay, so that glued together pretty nicely, and the uh, little swoop is still there in the back. Don't forget to do that. But that's optional, you don't have to do that. I just wanted to match the file. These are the uh, raised detail areas that we did the bevel on. So this is basically going to just sit right on top of there. So that's what these are for. You just glue, glue the edge here, and just glue that on top on both sides. And if you go to the Pepper Core Designer, you can see it's above. Uh, this area here and this area here so it kind of goes like that so keep that in mind use that trick for uh, other projects that you're working on
it always works the same way. I already had some on that side. Okay, so you're just going to want to glue this edge, this edge, and this edge for later. But you don't have to, you could do it later as well. I'll just do these sides for now. Okay, so I'm going to do contact cement is tacky. Just take that little raised piece, the beveled piece, and then make sure you line it up with the, the marker that you made for the lip. Just put it right on the edge. And have your little raised detail area. Okay, so we're just going to do the same thing to the other side, and we'll move on to the next piece. Just refer to the Peppercore Designer. Next, we're going to do these inner cheek pieces. So this is kind of like another example of like the rear triangle. It's going to be a lowered detail, kind of like offset. Okay, so we have both pieces here. You can see there are already lips on there that we did before. So you're going to have to glue this lip, this lip. You can see where they go once they're connected, like so. Makes sense. And then this bottom lip will be for the chin guard area. So we'll have to put it somewhere around here. Like that, and then this lip will kind of glue underneath here, like that. But we'll get there soon. For now, we'll just glue, just glue these three on both sides. Then we're gonna have to do the areas where they're gonna connect to. So just this area here, and this area on that raised detail piece. Okay, same thing to the other side. Okay, so everything's ready to glue. Everything's tacky. So just gonna glue that on the inside here. Line up where those lips are. Same thing to the other side. This is looking really nice, I like where it's going. Let's continue on to the chin guard. Let's refer to the peppercorn designer again. Let's do the chin uh, guard piece. So these two are gonna connect together. This is one piece that's gonna connect to here. And this is gonna connect, and this section is gonna connect to that front piece here. So we're gonna have to glue all the edges together. Okay, so first we take the two pieces, front of the chin guard, and glue them on their bevels. Then we take that top piece, which also has a bevel, because we're going to get that sharp angle. And glue that as well. And then we'll just take the bottom piece of the chin guard, and then just line it up, do the same thing. Don't worry about seams. We can sand seams later, but tr always try to get the seams as uh, flush as possible. Sometimes with these little small pieces, it's kind of hard at times to line it up. But uh, don't worry, we can always go back and clean up the seams with, uh, with a little bit of sanding. Other than that, looks good. Got the look we're going for. Now we're gonna do the connecting points of the chin guard. So we're gonna have to curve this with a little bit of heat and then when we glue this we're gonna have to curve this area here so that way it lines up but that will make sense once we actually do it so you can see here on the peppercore designer what I'm talking about this goes inward like that and because we didn't uh, do this seam here we kind of just glued it together uh, we don't have that angle but we're just going to curve it because I didn't want an angular chin guard. I wanted it kind of like a little bit of a curve. So that's not a problem. Once we glue it, we just flex the foam and it should work out fine. I'll show you guys that in a second. First, we're going to glue their little detail pieces that they have on the side. Simple enough. Just put contact cement on both sides and just line it up right here. Okay, 
Okay, so while we're at this, let's just glue this edge here because it's going to connect to the already glued edge on the chin guard. Okay. okay. Another thing we can glue is the lip here. And I'll show you guys where that's going to go in a sec. Okay, so we have this. These pieces are ready. This still needs some time to get tacky, but I'm just going to be careful. So this is going to glue here. It's going to line up. Don't go where the lip is. That lip, pretend like it's not there right now. So line up to the line underneath. And then just glue it like that. You're not going to use the styrofoam ball for this because it's kind of small. So just use your, your hands. I do this a lot on smaller bits or uh, styrofoam balls are not going to make much of a difference. See the curve? That curve will hold. Uh, refer to the pepper core designer. You can see that this uh, chin guard is above this piece here. So you want to glue it in an offset. Don't glue it flush. Glue it so this one is above, uh, in front of it. I'll show you guys that in a sec. So I'm just going to start gluing it. I'll show you guys close up after. As you can see, a little bit, it's kind of like raised, a tiny bit, so it's not flush. I just wanted to match the reference. You could do it flush if you want, I just wanted to have it a little bit raised. So do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so now we have the chin guard assembled here, these pieces. So we have a lip that that's going to attach to the chin guard. This chin guard is going to attach underneath that raised detail piece. So we're going to have to put some glue under there and then some glue under there where that's going to connect. Just the final pieces to assemble. Let's assemble this section here first. Then slide this under. Squish it as far as you can this way. Okay. Do the same thing to this side. Slide under and push this way. And with that section completed, you are done assembling the foam helmet. So when it's all said and done, it should look like the Peppacura uh, file. It looks really good. I'm really happy with it so far. Okay, so we have the helmet here. And what you want to do is you want to sand all these seams down. So that way they're less noticeable when you paint. Uh, not every seam needs to be sanded down, like we want, probably want to keep this nice uh, point here, but then we'll start to sand the dome. This cross section here, you want to sand where you glue pieces together. I'm going to use a palm sander, you don't need to. You can just sand it by hand if you want. I'm using 120 grit, then I'm going to go over it with 240 grit, just to smooth that out. And then just sand and go. <laughs> The key is you want to keep sanding so obviously the two sides are even. Uh, that's why it's uh, crucial that when you're gluing your foam pieces together that you glue it as flush as possible. So it, it requires less work to get this even surface. So let's say I was done the whole helmet and I switched to the 240 grit and then I just sand that a bit more so it's a lot more smoother. There's another thing you can do to clean up the helmet and make it look a little bit more refined. You can take a palm sander and carefully kind of bring down these edges a little bit, just so that's so sharp. You can also sand some of these seams to clean it up a bit. Or you can take a rotary tool with a sanding bit and you can go over that carefully and do the same thing and bring down those sharp edges. So just a little bit softer and a little bit more realistic. Remember. When you're using the rotary tool to use safety glasses or goggles, so you don't get any um, 
of these bits flying in your face. So there's a little example on the chin guard. Remember you don't need a rotary tool or a palm sander, you can just use sandpaper and you can just sand it by hand. You do the same thing and just go over with the finer sandpaper. So it's entirely up to you. If you don't want to get those tools, you can just sand by hand and it shouldn't be a problem at all. Okay, once you've sanded areas on your helmet, edges, you've brought down edges and all that, uh, go over with a heat gun. The heat gun will, will kind of heal a little bit of the sanding and make it look a lot nicer. Okay, so that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward about sanding seams. Go over any seams that you don't want anymore. Bring down any kind of uh, seams that look a little sloppy just to kind of level them off and bring down any edges that are a little bit too sharp. And then once you get that done, I'm gonna show you guys how to fill in those seams to make them even smoother. So next I'm gonna fill in some seams that I don't want, like this one here that I joined here, and then maybe just fill in some of the seams on the top of the dome, and I think that's pretty much it. So what I'm gonna use to uh, fix all those seams is uh, Quick Seal, it's an acrylic caulking. It, uh, it's not gonna have any kind of smell and it is flexible. You can also use water to thin it. So what I do is I just take, this is like a playing card. Okay, so I'm just gonna take some, put it on the playing card. Like that, so if you ever use body filler, it's similar. So you just spread it on thin where you want to fill the seam. Like that. And you just go along the seam and that's it. It should fill in the gap. It's very easy. So that's pretty straightforward for areas like large surface areas. So for little areas like this, like I want to clean up the chin, so just kind of just go over. I put it on there and then I'm going to use my finger just to smooth it out. Like that. Like so. I'm going to do the same thing to the top. Spread it on there first. So I don't make a mess with my finger. Just be careful you don't make too much of a mess. So I'm going to take the quick seal, fill in any other areas that need uh, cleaning up and filling. I'm going to come back show you guys what areas I I corrected and I'll move on to the next stage. So I finished filling in more areas that needed quick seal. Like I said, I put some around the chin guard. I even added some on that seam there, needed filling. And here, and uh, I just let it dry. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some very fine thousand grit sandpaper. And I'm just gonna sand the quick seal down because it's a, pretty, it's a little bit rough. So sanding it will obviously make it a little bit more smoother and it should clean it up a bit more. So all you do is just take some sandpaper, you're gonna do this by hand. Don't use a palm sand or anything. Just sand down the quick seal, just so it's smoother. The reason you use a thousand grit is because it's not coarse enough to take off too much of the quick seal, but it's, it's uh, fine enough to where you will smooth out the roughness that you laid out with the quick seal. Sand down all your seams and other areas, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so all the seams are filled with quick seal and they've been sanded. Uh, now, if you would like, you could start sealing it, which I will get to, but first I'm gonna give you an optional bonus step, which is really fun to do. It's giving your uh, cosplay helmet or armor or prop some physical battle damage. So what you're gonna need is a wood burning tool. You can also use a soldering iron. Uh, I'm gonna make a list on the website under tutorials for all the supplies you're gonna need so you have access to all the links. So you're gonna take the soldering iron and all you're gonna do is strategically find areas to give it gashes like scars, bullet holes, anything you can think of. So use real reference for like kind of battle damage you can find online. Uh, eventually once you do it enough, you'll get the eye for it, so you don't really need to use too much reference. So all you're gonna do is find areas on your helmet. You wanna give it cool kind of like scars. So I'm gonna give it one over the eye. That's usually pretty common. Remember to be in a well ventilated area because the uh, foam fumes are not pleasant. Kind of see, starting to take shape. I 
added a cool scar around the eye. Okay, don't go crazy. Just add some sporadic damage here and there. Okay, I'll show you another example. This won't be a scar, this will just be like a pit hole. Like a dent, like a burn dent, kind of. This is a nice little dent gash at the back. So if you want, you can even add another kind of scar to offset that one. I like doing that a lot. Gives it some character. I like that a lot, that looks good. Let's do a scar that transcends here to here. Okay, so I have another scar on the side here, kind of like leading over to the side of the helmet. Okay, and just add one more scar. I'm not gonna go crazy with this thing. This is just to show you an example. Some things suit this kind of damage more. I don't put too much to take away the look of the helmet. You don't have to always make things the same. You can make some serious damage that links up together. See? I like that a lot. Okay, and then you can just add little tiny, like, shoot up areas. It always helps. Because your helmet's never going to be perfect, especially if it's been used in battle. So any area that you see that I've uh, battle damaged, we're going to do a, another technique right after. I'm going to show you that. But this is going to be after we seal it. Okay, so now that we did the battle damage, we can finally seal the foam helmet in preparation for paint. Okay, so now it's time to seal the foam helmet. You need to seal the foam so that way you have something for the paint to stick to. It's not wise to paint directly on the foam because the paint might kind of absorb a bit and it'll look grainy in the end. When you seal the foam, it'll give it a nice finish. What I'm using to seal the foam is this uh, Bounce rubberizer. It's similar to PVA glue. So when, if, you don't, if you can't get access to this Bounce stuff, uh, you can use any kind of school glue and just mix it with a little bit of water. So maybe two parts glue, one part water. A brand that you can use for sealing your foam helmets and armor is Tacky Glue. I'll have that linked as well. I've used it in the past and it works great. I'm just gonna pour it into this little cup. You don't need too much. I'm gonna tint the PVA type mixture. I'm gonna tint it because I want, when it dries, I want it to have a little bit of color because what's gonna happen is when it cures, it's gonna be clear. So I want it to have like a tint of some color to it. So it's gonna mix a little bit of black until it changes color. So I recommend using a foam brush. That way when you put it on your helmet or armor prop, uh, it's not gonna leave too many streaks. So this will reduce streaks by a lot. So all you do is just take some of the solution you're gonna use to seal your helmet or armor and you just start to paint it on. And get in all the little crevices and all the areas. I usually just put one coat. It always seems to be enough. This stuff doesn't take too long to dry but I usually leave it 24 hours just to be sure. And when I come back, I'm gonna check it and then I'm gonna see if any areas need more. And if it seems okay, I'm gonna start painting it. Okay, so it's the next day. We're back and the sealant has completely dried. Uh, you can check your helmet to see if you missed any spots and maybe go over it again with another coat. Uh, looks fine on my end. Okay, so the next step I'm gonna add is a surface primer. This is a Vallejo uh, primer. It's acrylic polyurethane. I just use this for all my foam things after I seal it. This is uh, optional, you don't need to do this. So if you're happy the way it's sealed, you can move on right to painting. Okay, I'm gonna be spraying one coat of the primer using a spray gun with a compressor. Okay, so I finished painting the helmet with the Vallejo primer. I did one coat and it turned out really nice. I like how it looks, all uniform. Next, I'm gonna be painting a base coat of metallic silver. It's acrylic paint. Uh, I'm gonna be using it to emphasize all the battle damage that I did. I'm gonna be utilizing a masking technique. I'll show you guys how to do that later. So it's up to you if you wanna do this step. Otherwise, you can just go on to your base coat and paint your helmet whatever color you want. 
You can hand paint this, but I'm gonna be doing it with the spray gun again. Okay, so the silver uh, paint is now dry. I like using acrylics a lot, obviously, because it's flexible when you're working with foam and they dry really super fast, so you can move on to the next step pretty quickly. Okay, the reason I did the silver coat is because when I do the masking technique, I'm gonna paint a coat over the masking uh, solution, and then I'm gonna peel the masking solution off, and it's gonna reveal the metal look underneath, so it's kind of like it's been torn off. Show you guys what that looks like. I'll show you guys what I'll be using and I'll name a few alternatives you can use if you can't find these kind of things. Humbrol Maskol Masking Solution is specifically for kind of uh, things like this. You can also use uh, liquid latex and you can also use like simple things. You can get like, like mustard. You can get a, some mustard and just use a brush and put mustard in the scars. And, and trust me, it actually really works. Because then once you paint it and you just wipe it off, it'll do the exact same effect. So I just took some, I'm just gonna brush it in. You don't need too much, even a thin layer will do in areas that you want this effect to happen. Okay, so all the masking has been done in the scars, burn marks, and just random edges, just so I can show you guys this technique. Uh, next is to paint the base coat. So the helmet base coat is gonna be red and is gonna have accents of white gunmetal, and black. So I'll show you what areas I'm gonna be painting those, but first we're gonna paint the entire helmet red. Okay, so the red paint is all dry, looks really good. So next, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna be painting details, I'm gonna be doing this by hand. I'm not gonna be using the spray gun for this. So I'm gonna do some uh, white details. I'm gonna paint this section white, and I'm gonna paint this area on the back here white, and then obviously the other side, I'll paint that white too. The trick to, to painting by hand for me, I noticed, is using a soft brush, it always helps and I water the paint down. I'm using acrylic paint and I water it down with a little bit of water. You can also use other things. So I'm gonna take some and just start painting the white. When you paint by hand, it'll probably take a few coats versus painting with a spray gun, but that's okay. I wanted to show you guys just an example of hand painting because I will be hand painting the rest of the details. Okay, so I finished painting the white details on the helmet and the back too. I did about three coats. I did it by hand. Obviously, I would have preferred to paint it with the spray gun. It would have been a lot quicker. If, you, if you're just a beginner and you want to try out this hobby, see if you like it. Painting by hand is fine. I painted a lot of things by hand, and I have uh, been doing this for a long time. Down the road, if you really like this hobby, you want to make more things, and want to be more efficient, then you could upgrade to a compressor and a spray gun if you like. Next on the agenda, I'm going to be painting some areas gunmetal. So I'm going to paint this section here on both sides, and this area here, uh, also gunmetal. I'm going to be painting some areas black, this inner cheek area and this front chin section will be black as well. Okay, so the gunmetal and the black has been painted. I really like the contrast of all the colors. And also what I did to the uh, borders of the white, I just went over with a Sharpie I recommend getting a really fine Sharpie and just kind of trace the outline. I usually do this sometimes depending on the project. This is a, like a hero helmet so I wanted to give it kind of like a comic look and I just think it makes the white pop a bit better on the red. I even did the same uh, outline on the back too. It's just another optional thing you can do to add some more details and just make things pop a bit better. Okay so I painted that last accent with the gunmetal. I really like how that looks and another option is if you want to trace the detail lines again to match that look that you did with the white border, you can do that as well. Okay, so now that the helmet's all painted up, all the areas are done, okay, now it's time to peel off all the masking fluid on all those areas that you you had uh, applied it on. So make sure you remember where they are. So what you can do is you're just gonna rub where those areas are and kind of just like take it off. Just be careful, you don't ruin your, your uh, part. It will come off, just give it some time. And it's cool because when you peel it off, you get like a nice random effect when you... Okay, 
Okay, so I'm gonna go around the helmet and take off all the masking fluid and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so one more step to the paint job. This is also optional. It's I'm gonna do a wash using black acrylic paint. So I'm gonna use the same paint I used for the chin and the cheek area here. I'm just gonna water it down a bit more because this is the kind of technique where you just wanna fill in. I'm just using it to fill in all these uh, scrapes and cuts and all this stuff because they look kind of dull, like bland. So I wanna take the wash and fill in all the areas to really make them stand out a bit more. And also give it the surface kind of like a gritty, sooty look to it so it's not so perfect because the, the surface is looking a little too flat. Everything here is optional. You don't have to do any battle damage. You don't have to do any wash or anything like that. You can just paint it and have a crisp, perfect looking helmet if that's your, your, your taste. Or you can do a little bit of weathering and have a little bit extra fun with it. I'm gonna take that paint that I had. You don't need too much. I'm just gonna add some water to the paint. Water it down a bit. I'm just gonna mix it. I have this mixer here. Uh, I'll definitely put this in the list of, of materials and supplies. Okay, so then all you do is take the black acrylic wash, which is just acrylic wa watered down, and you just kind of go over the helmet and into all the crevices. Don't worry if it drips and all that stuff. Uh, remember, you gotta work quick. You don't want this stuff to dry. You can go over the whole helmet if you want, or you can just go over just certain areas. You gotta remember that this will bring down the color of the paint a little bit. Okay, cool. Okay, so before it dries, you gotta wipe it all off. Remember, you can use water uh, if some of it doesn't come off and you wanna take off a little bit more. So keep that in mind, you're not gonna be stuck. And then also incorporate some dabs. The more water you use, the more you can take off if you don't want too much of a like ruined soot look. So this is the helmet with the wash. I like the look a lot. It really uh, made it look a little bit more realistic because the, the foam uh, just painted flat looked incredibly fake. I like the way a wash always looks, especially on foam costumes. Uh, it really does give them a little bit more level of realism. I'm okay with this level of grime. So we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so this is probably gonna be the last phase of weathering. I'm gonna be doing uh, dry brushing using uh, uh, black and, and metallic silver. So I'm just gonna use acrylic again. First I'm gonna do black dry brushing. And then in some areas, I might go over that with some silver. So like just on the edges, I'll show you guys how to do that in a sec. It's a really simple technique everyone does. Make sure you get a stiff brush for this effect. Okay, so I'm just gonna use acrylic here. I'm just gonna put some, you won't need too much. Take some black and then you're just gonna tap it on a paper towel because you don't want it too wet. That's why it's called the dry brush technique. Okay, then you just take the brush, the edge of the brush where you put the paint on and just kind of just tap on the edge and you can even like do some swipes. This is a good uh, technique to emphasize some edges because these eyes definitely need some life to make them stand out a bit more. So it's almost like you're outlining them, but you're not. Don't do this on every single edge. Just do it uh, random. It's like even here, I'm gonna go over, but not overpower it. I'm just gonna swipe over. With these kind of areas, make sure your brush is really dry. I'll do one more example on the back here. I get the brush really dry for these areas and then just kind of go over. Okay, so now you're gonna do some silver dry brushing on top of the black and maybe just some other areas. And you're gonna get some acrylic silver paint. You can also use uh, hobby paints. These are really good. Uh, I'm using Mr. Metal Color Chrome Silver. These will probably give you a better chrome metal look. Make sure you just shake these first before you use them just to mix up the metallics. Dry it on the paper towel. Let's go over the edge. Okay, so all the weathering has been complete. And there's other things you can do. You can also use this vinyl sticker. This is a carbon print. You can get this as well. I'll put this in the material list for you to use. So you can take like a flat area like this. And if you're not happy with it or you just had this planned out from the beginning, you can cut that to shape. So I took the original template 
piece that I cut out. You guys saw me do it earlier. And I just traced it onto this uh, vinyl sticker uh, kind of paper. The vinyl carbon print is applied. Just gives it another optional detail to your projects. Yeah, you can get these in different colors. And uh, yeah, I could even put it here. Here, just a, another cool optional effect for your cosplay props and costume parts. Okay, so that's uh, the last detail thing I'm gonna show you guys. I know I've been stacking uh, little details and stuff. But I just wanna give you guys as much info as possible for your first project, if this is your first project with using foam and peppercora. Okay, so the final thing I'm gonna do to this project, this uh, helmet here, the hero helmet, is I'm gonna give it comic book style eyes. So I'm gonna white out the eyes. So you can see through, but no one can see your eyes. So it's a very simple technique. I'm gonna be using this sticky mesh, the perforated mesh. Uh, so when you detach it from the paper, it will be see-through and you'll be able to see through the tiny holes, but they won't be able to see your eyes, which is a very cool effect. Okay, so you just need, you can get some thin clear plastic. You can get this from like anything you can find, plastic containers that are clear. You just need something to stick the perforated mesh on. Okay, so that should be enough to do both eyes. You're going to want to place it behind the eye here, the eye slot. So you want to want to glue that in later. Okay, so just made it a little bit uh, smaller. Okay, so you're going to take the perforated mesh. Like I said, this is uh, sticky. So I'm just going to cut enough for both. I'm going to stick it on. That piece there. Okay, so now it's on the plastic. I'll show you guys what the perforated mesh looks like through the camera. So you can see that. So you can see, still see through but you can't really see as well. Especially in the helmet, you won't be able to see much. Okay, so I'm just gonna use super glue to glue it in there. Okay, so there you go. Got one eye done. I love that look, it's a really cool look. Okay, I'm just gonna do the other one quick. I'll put it on the inside. Okay, so with the last eye insert installed, the Armored Hero helmet is finally complete. I'm really happy how it turned out. Hope you guys followed along and understood a lot of the concepts that I tried to explain. Remember, you can take these techniques and you can apply them to any peppercora file you come across. The, my approach to these projects is always the same. I don't do anything different. The way I cut foam, the way I cut the angles is all the same. So hopefully you understood how to cut a bevel cut, when to cut a bevel cut, what kind, when to heat shape. Uh, what kind of glue to use, uh, how to clean up seams and paint and seal and all those things, how to add battle damage. You're going to use these techniques on any project. So that being said, all that's left is to try on the helmet and show you guys what it looks like. If you want to support Heroes Workshop directly, please remember to like this video, comment down below, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Please share the video with your friends, anyone that you know would like to get into this hobby. So this is Stealth from Heroes Workshop. I'll be back soon with another project. Thank you.